student here at Ohio University. And today I'm going to be teaching you all about four different percussion instruments in the percussion family. So there are over 50 different instruments that I'm studying here at OU that are classified as percussion instruments. But I only have seven minutes, so I'm just going to teach you guys about four of them. So it's kind of a crash course. So first up, we have the drum set, which I just played for you. I was playing a groove called Samba, which is a Latin groove. And the drum set is probably the most common instrument in this day and age. If you turn on the radio, you're going to hear, first of all, you're probably going to hear percussion in any song that comes on on the radio. If you turn it on to a random station right now, and it's most likely going to be drum set. Drum set has been around for over a century now in most recorded music from jazz through rock and roll, pop, all different genres. So it's very versatile. It can work in just about any scenario. So the first question is, what is a percussion instrument? And there are two main types, which are membranophones and idiophones. So a percussion instrument is anything that you strike either with your hand, a stick, or a mallet, for example, any kind of implement. And the sound is created when the instrument is struck. So the first type of percussion instrument I'm going to teach you about is called a membranophone. And that is basically drums. So it's called a membranophone, which means it has a resonant membrane, which is the drum head or the skin. So this drum actually has two, bottom and top, and when you strike the drum, the two membranes will resonate in unison to create a tone, which sounds like this. The next type of percussion instrument I'm going to teach you about is called an idiophone. So rather than having a membrane or something that creates the sound, the instrument itself is going to resonate and create the sound. So a cymbal is a good example. It doesn't have any strings like a guitar or a piano. It's not a brass instrument. You don't blow through it. It doesn't have a membrane on it like a drum. Literally, you strike the instrument, and that's the sound that you get. So this is a ride cymbal, and it can be played in three main ways. So the first one is with the tip of the stick on the crest of the cymbal. <laughs> The next one is a crash sound with the shoulder of the stick. And then the third is playing the bell of the cymbal. So if you combine all three of these, you can get a lot of different cool melodies, even within just one cymbal. Two different crash cymbals. These are usually crashed on, which you would hit with the shoulder of the stick as opposed to playing with the tip of the stick. And then we have the hi hats, which are a stack of cymbals. Usually the bottom cymbal is much heavier than the top one. And they're controlled with a foot pedal, so you can bounce it up and down to get that chick sound. Or you can play them closed or open. parts of the drum set. So now I'm going to move on to the marching snare. I'm going to bring my headphones with me because any instrument or any sound that is over 50 decibels can cause permanent damage to the human ear. So whenever I'm practicing or playing live, I always try to protect my ears. Usually if I'm playing live, I'll wear earplugs because these things look a little bit goofy. But in my personal practice, I always try to wear these because they have a lot better hearing protection and they have an aux input so I can listen to music while I play. So before I get into the details of the marching snare, I'm going to play a short little excerpt of a lick that I wrote.
tilt to project. The drum head is actually made of Kevlar and carbon fiber, as you can see, it's black. And that's the same material that bulletproof vests are made out of. So it's very durable and it has a very high tension on it, which gives it a very staccato, short sound and a lot of fast rebound. So this is going to be used in marching applications. So if you've ever, ever been to a football game and you've seen a marching band perform at halftime, someone was probably playing on one of these marching snares. Could, be, could have been as many as eight or nine or even 15 people playing on these to form a snare line. So in a drum line, you usually have a snare line, then you'll have a tenor line, which is people playing on multi-toms, doing lots of arounds and crossovers around the drums. And then lastly, you have a bass line where people play on upright drums. And they'll use a bass line with usually split parts. So it's almost like a bell choir, or if you've seen people play with boom whackers, where each person's part is pretty simple and they'll only play one note now and again. But then when you add everyone's parts and you put them together, you get this composite melody that's really fun to listen to. So, yeah, um, a marching snare can be found in a college band, a high school marching band, a drum corps. Um, I, I went to Lakewood High School, so I was in the Lakewood High School marching band. Now I'm in the 110 drum line, and I'm also in the Cavaliers, which is a drum corps, and I'll be going on tour with them this summer, playing this guy, the marching snare. So next up, we have a melodic percussion instrument, which is the marimba. And I know what you're thinking. I thought that was called a xylophone, not a marimba. Well, there's a slight difference. A xylophone, all of the keys are the same width. But as you can see on the marimba, this top key is pretty narrow, it's about an inch. And then these lowest keys are like two inches across. They get a lot wider. And that gives the instrument a really nice range that a xylophone can't achieve. So from the highest note to the lowest note, you've got five octaves. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick. These metal tubes underneath are called the resonators. And without those, you don't really get a lot of sound. So I'm going to cover up the whole of the resonator so that it can't actually amplify the sound of the wooden key. And this is the sound you get from that. Now I'm going to take my hand away so this entire metal tube is amplifying the sound and hopefully you can hear it over the camera audio. It rings out probably five times as long and it's much louder. So. You'll find the marimba in concert band, in marching band, in the front ensemble, in orchestras, and it's a very versatile percussion instrument and it has a great range, probably the best out of any keyboard percussion instrument. So I'm going to play a little excerpt from Rhythm Song by Paul Smadbeck. <laughs> Stevens grip and it actually allows you to change the intervals that you hold the mallets in so it takes a lot of practice to perfect that but you can also play the marimba with just two mallets so lastly I'm going to show you all the conga this is a Latin drum and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a drum lesson on it so we were talking earlier about the membranes this membrane uh, is an animal skin rather than a synthetic drum head. 
So it's not as durable, it doesn't last as long, and it changes a lot with the weather. So when it gets colder, this thing will go way up in pitch, and when it's hot, it'll get low. So it's hot today in the summer, and I came in here today to film this speech, and this thing was very low, so I had to tighten it up a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna show you all how to play three different sounds. The first sound is the open tone. So you're gonna strike the drum with the edge right along these knuckles right here, and you're gonna allow your fingers to rebound back up, because if you choke them down, the drum won't resonate. Next, we're gonna practice the bass sound. So you're gonna cup your palm, and rather than playing on the edge of the drum, we're gonna play in the center, and rather than letting our hand rebound, like with the tone, we're gonna stop it using the weight of our hand and arm to stop our hand down. So that's the bass sound, the tone, and lastly the slap, which is similar to the tone, except rather than your whole hand striking at once, you're going to strike the drum almost like a whip, and your fingertips are going to strike last, and it's going to get a very high frequency out of the drum. So there's the bass, tone, and slap. So now I'm going to play a little bit for you, showing you how you can use these different sounds to create a groove. And now I'm going to teach you guys a groove. So first thing we're going to do is just play a steady pulse with our right hand using the bass sound. And you can do this on your chest, on your lap, or on a table. It works very well on a table, actually, if you're sitting at your desk. So we're going to cup our right hand and get that bass sound, using getting as much low frequency as we can out of the drum or whatever you're playing on. So play along with me. One, two, ready, go. Now we're going to add in the left hand in between these notes with the right hand playing open tones. One, two, ready, go. adjusted the rhythm slightly, that first and is going to change to an uh. So it's going to come in a little bit later. So rather than just straight one and two and one and two and, count along with me. One, a two and one, a two and one, a two and one, a two and one. So now let's play it to finish out the speech. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about the percussion family of instruments and everything that I'm studying here at OU. Hopefully I inspired you guys to go out and play some drums or keyboard percussion instruments. And thank you all for listening. One, two, ready, go.